Hi, eighth graders. This is Mrs. Cunningham here. Wanted to do a quick lesson with you on as you're researching for this water pollution project, as you're reading through research, whether you're using your own websites or you're using the websites that Mrs. Um, O'Connell put together for you, as you're reading, you need to make sure that you are summarizing and you're paraphr paraphrasing your research. So what I'm going to take you through right now is how you might summarize, how you might paraphrase, and how you make sure that you're answering the questions that Mrs. Mawad and Mr. Wilson want you answering in your slides. So one thing that I created that I think would be very, very helpful to you is as you're reading, start listing your facts, paste the source that you got the information from, and think about what question in my presentation is this going to answer. So if you look above, I wrote out the questions that you have to respond to in each of the slides of your presentation. So as you're going along and you list a fact, fact, copy and paste the question that your fact is answering for your presentation. This is an easy way for you to stay organized. So then when you actually go to make your slide presentation, all your information is right here and you can copy right from here. So when you're looking through your research, you need to make sure that you are summarizing or paraphrasing. Both mean that you are not copying and pasting straight from the website. You have to be able to put it in your own words. So I'm going to show you real quick how you might summarize a fact that you find on a website. And then I'm also going to show you how you can paraphrase. So let's start with summarizing. So on this chart here, it says a summary is a shortened form of a text with all the main ideas. So how do I write a good one? I need to make sure that I include important ideas from the text. And that means the ones that were important to the author for them to include. I have to put them in my own word. And this is the biggest piece is I need to leave out details. And what I mean by that is leave out the ones that are not important and only keep the interesting ones. Also, think about how the text is structured. So you're gonna see on an example in a minute, most of the time when you're reading on a website, the author already structures each section by main idea, which you're going to see. So I'm gonna show you how you might do this. So I'm going to go here and my husband right now is making fun of me for saying the word so, so many times. Just had to put that in there right now. So we're going to go to a website for the water contamination in Crestwood, Illinois. We're going to click on this page. So the skill that I'm focusing on right now, as we know, is summarizing. So already they're giving me a summary at the top here of what the website's going to be about. And if you look as I go down, this says what happened. It says frequently asked questions about it. Did these concentrations of contaminants violate the public drinking water standards? And it asks more and more questions. So these are things that the author did to help organize the text. So I'm going to focus on just reading one of these. So one of the questions that I am supposed to answer in my project is what are the details of the issue? So going back to this sheet here, it says what happened? I have a feeling this is going to give me a good idea of exactly what happened in this incident that I can include on my slides. So I'm gonna read just a little bit of it. It says from 1986 to 2007, the Illinois EPA believes Crestwood was using water from its contaminated groundwater well to supplement the Lake Michigan source water without informing the Illinois APA or its water consumers. Since the Crestwood public water supply well was reportedly not in use during this time period, no routine samples of that well were taken. Federal Safe Drinking Water Act regulations do not require sampling of PWS, which is public water supply up here, wells that are not in use. Consequently, so in other words, no regularly collected data. Notice I just skipped over that word. Sometimes I skip over words if I don't think they're important. Data are available to determine their levels of contamination over those years. Okay, so as I'm reading this, I'm feeling that this is actually answering a different question. So when it said what happened, 
if I look back at the sheet, one of the questions that Mrs. Mawad and Mr. Wilson are having you answer is what caused the pollution? Something that I notice as I'm reading here is it's talking about since it was supposedly not a well that was in use, they were not checking the water to see if it was contaminated, which led to it becoming contaminated and hurting people. Notice right there, I summarized what I read. So instead of just copying and pasting this, I try to sum up in my own words what this said. Reason why summarizing is important. You need to be able to be knowledgeable on your topic. If you're only copying and pasting from a website, but you don't really understand actually what the website's saying, it's really hard to be knowledgeable on your topic. So as I was reading here, a couple things stood out to me. So one thing, groundwater wells stood out to me. So on this page, as I start listing a fact, I'm gonna write groundwater well. If I don't know what this means, I have to look it up. I can't just paste it there. Don't put something down that you don't understand what it means. Okay, another thing that it said is that they were not checking the well during this time because according to this regulation, they don't need to check wells that are not in use or water, um, water, excuse me, water wells that are not in use. So I'm going to add that. So groundwater wells were not checked because, or not groundwater wells. I'm going to say the groundwater well is it in Crestwood was not checked during this time because according to the law, wells that are not in use don't need to be checked. Okay, so notice what I did. I read first, I picked out the main ideas. So the main things that stood out to me, okay, there's groundwater wells. If they're not in use, they're not being checked. I read all of this and was be able to sum or was able to summarize it into my own words. So Going back to what I said, this was answering for me the question about what started to cause the pollution. So I'm going to copy and paste that here so I know I can add that to that slide for later. And I'm also going to copy and paste the website here so I remember where I got my information. So going back to the chart here, notice what I did. I included only the important ideas. I did not include a lot of details. I just read the paragraph, and you can't see me right now as I'm doing this, but as I started summarizing, I wasn't rereading. All I was doing to myself is I was thinking, okay, what were the main ideas that I read through? And again, this is going to make you more knowledgeable on the topic, because if you copy and paste, there's no way of knowing if you really actually understand the topic or not. Someone should be able to ask you any question on your topic at the end of this, and without looking down, you should be able to answer it. And the only way to do that is to be able to summarize and paraphrase. So second thing that you can do is instead of summarizing, you can paraphrase, which is very, very much almost the same thing as summarizing, very similar. So if you look at the steps here, it says, First, stop. Stop reading and cover the text with your hand. Think. Think about what you read. And then lastly, paraphrase. Paraphrase by softly telling yourself what you read. And here's some tips to think about. Rereading the text, looking at the first or last line, and looking for keywords are ways to be able to put it into your own words. Because that essentially is what paraphrasing is. It's putting the text into your own words. And the other tip I really like is sometimes putting synonyms words that mean the same thing, helps you paraphrase it. And actually, not only does it help paraphrase, but it actually usually helps me understand it a little bit better too. So I'm going to go to a different text now so I can show you how you might paraphrase. So I'm gonna go down to the Love Canal in upstate New York, and I'm gonna hit on the history of it. 
Okay, so I'm on the Encyclopedia of Earth. Again, like I've told you before, notice that when I'm on a website, it's already organized usually by main ideas. So when I'm reading and doing research, I don't need to read every single thing on this page. That's not needed. I need to just look for the information that I need. And so again, look at your questions here to help guide what you actually need to find answers to. So I'm not going to choose a question. I'm gonna look here and say, okay, what of this information stands out that I maybe could use in my presentation? So I'm noticing that here it's a summary of events. Again, this kind of sounds like it's going to talk to me about how it happened. And if I look at the questions I have to answer, one question I have to answer is how is it affecting the environment and what caused the pollution to happen and what events led up to the pollution. And by the way, as I'm looking through my questions actually, I'm noticing that that first fact I had actually also answers what questions or what events led up to the pollution. A fact could answer more than one question, by the way, so that's okay as well. Okay, so back to paraphrasing. I'm gonna paraphrase this paragraph for us. So a reminder of the steps again. You need to stop, you need to think by covering it up, and thinking, what did I just read? What are the key points that I need to summarize? So go ahead and read along here with me. At the time of the first evacuation order in August 1978, the state established the Love Canal Interagency Task Force to coordinate the many activities undertaken at the canal. The task force had three major responsibilities, the relocation of evacuated families, the continuation of health and environmental studies, and the construction of a drainage system to help further migration of toxic chemicals. Okay, so as I'm reading this, I'm finding that it's actually kind of answering a different question for me. So I'm going to take you through because there's a couple things I didn't understand and I need to reread. So one thing that they said was the first evacuation order. Okay, so evacuation means making people have to leave an area. So obviously these people had to leave the area. Since we're doing a water pollution project, I'm assuming they had to leave because of something with the water. Okay, next thing that they said here is the Love Canal Interagency Task Force. Something I know about task force is usually that's a group of people that have to coordinate or do some kind of job to help in the area. Okay, so I'm going to keep reading. They did many activities to work on the canal. So they had three major responsibilities. So one, relocation of evacuated families. Okay, so relocation, in other words, they needed to move the families to a safer area. Another thing the continuation of health and environmental studies. Okay, so studies to me means they obviously were studying the area and trying to figure out what was going on and what the health problems might be and how it might affect the environment. Okay, and the last thing it said is construction of a drainage system. Okay, so that tells me that they didn't have this before. They needed to create some kind of system. It says further migration of toxic chemicals. Okay, so migration, that's not a word that I understand. I don't know what that means. So I'm going to search that. Okay, what does it say? Migration means movement from one part of something to another, seasonal movement of animals. Okay, that doesn't really make sense with what I'm reading. It says movement from one part to another. Okay, so means moving the toxic chemicals. Okay, so the system was going to help move the toxic chemicals. All right, now that I understand a little bit better what I read, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to look at my questions that I need to answer. Okay, what question could that possibly answer for me? So what are the details of the issue? Eh, not really. It's telling what this task force did to help with the problem, so it doesn't really answer that. Where is it located? Yeah, it does tell that a little bit, but that's not really the main point of it. How is it affecting the environments or humans and wildlife? doesn't really go into that. What caused the pollution? Mm, not really. What events led up to the pollution? Again, not really that. How are they correcting the issue? That makes the most sense. They had this task force that helped. Okay, notice I am not going to look back at the article to help me. I'm going to try to remember on my own what it said. Okay, so it said task force 
was put in place to help move people to somewhere safer, was in place to do more research into how it was affecting the environment and what did it say? Environment, oh, and health. So, and the health of people slash animals. And lastly, it said one more thing. What did it say? Oh, and then to put together this drainage system. And lastly, to put together a drainage system. So I said that it answered the question about what they're doing to correct the issue. So I'm going to copy and paste this here so I can remember that for later. And I'm going to copy and paste the website here. Okay, so these were just some examples of how you can paraphrase and put it into your own words. Main takeaways that I want you to take right here is one, notice that I did not read the whole website to do this. Notice that I really focused on reading and understanding what the text said. And then lastly, really focused on trying my best to put it in my own words so that I could understand it. Hope this helps. Feel free to reach out to Mrs. Mowad, Mr. Wilson, Mrs. O'Connell, or Mrs. Cunningham if you need help. See you later.